Sometimes when you're getting random deaths in the shrimp tank and you think all the parameters are correct and everything sort of seems fine, your shrimp are molting, no problem at all, but everything you've tried and you've looked for planaria and stuff doesn't seem to work, then I mentioned in a previous video, I'll put a link up here to it to the right, that uh, sometimes I use hydrogen peroxide. So I want to sort of just go through the steps and what I do. Um, it's not a miracle cure, I'm not going to suggest it is, but uh, it is something that's worth trying. And um, it, hydrogen peroxide is, it oxidizes and its oxidization process sort of kills bacteria and stuff. So if you think you've potentially got bacterial infections or problems like that, then, then I'd recommend you do this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go through sort of the steps. Um, it's only going to be a short video, but I'll go through the steps and how I do what I do and, and, and why. So the tank we're going to be dosing, and there's no reason why we're dosing this tank, I'm just, I'm just doing it for the sake of this video, is my Red Galaxy tank. So there aren't loads of shrimp in here, but um, I've sort of been separating out my, my Red Galaxies or my Red Fish Bones, and I'm trying to sort of get a line going. There's some with nice fish bone and some without, so we, you know we need to grow this colony before we do that. But I've already switched off this little mini filter, and the only reason I've got that mini filter in is just somewhere to keep it cycling. And trace my cable or my airline, should I say? Knock off the filter, so I've got no flow in there. There's no flow at all on that filter at the back there. And the idea of this process is that you leave that filter off after you've dosed for a minimum of one hour. So, so at least an hour, you know, don't leave it too long because you're going to lose bacteria. But um, I, I sort of tend to stick to about an hour, hour and 15, hour and 30 max. Um, but around the hour mark, you know, uh, at least an hour. So the peroxide that I'm using is loose milk. It's 3% food grade. And as you can tell, I buy it by the gallon, so I do use it periodically, um, just as sort of a, a once a month, once a couple of month things, just to sort of keep things going. It does get rid of algae as well, so you can spot dose black beard algae, but never go above above the dose. So if you search online, online says between 1.5 to 2.5 mil per gallon now whether that's a us or a uk gallon i'm not sure what i do is i sort of go below that and i do one to one and a half mil per five liters so the tanks in question are 45 liter tanks so that's you know nine fives are 45 so that's nine mil if i'm going for one milliliter but i actually put 10 mil in those tanks so let's get 10 mil of this ready so what I'm actually doing, and I'm trying to do this with one hand, is I do this in 5mm increments. So I get my syringe to 5mm. Walk over to that tank. I spread it all around the surface. I will stir this in a second. Sorry, I'll show you guys that. Go back for my other 5mm. Do the same again and then the key thing here is I've got one somewhere because I've just had it where have I put that ah, I found it. is to make sure you stir that round so give it a good stir just to sort of dissipate it And what you may get is you may get the shrimp acting a little bit erratically. Um, not always, but they, they, they sort of do because as that sort of hits the shrimp, any bacteria and stuff on the shrimp, it will oxidize that as well. So they potentially feel that. But the key here is leave that off for a minimum of an hour. So I'm currently... 20 to 2 so I'll set an alarm for sort of quarter to 3 
on that and I'll keep an eye on that sort of throughout that process. I won't sit and watch it for an hour, but I will keep an eye on that throughout that process. So let's come back in an hour. Quick check on these then, so it's been 25 minutes, no issues, not acting erratically, they can do, and sometimes force and molt as well, so just be aware of that, you know, and a disclaimer, I'm, I'm not recommending this, um, it's just something that I use when I'm struggling really and where, when all our sort of fails it's uh, it's a bit of a last ditch attempt so the um, so I'm not advocating it you know there are risks with it, it it's it's a bleach by oxidization at the end of the day but um, you know make your own mind up if not if all else is failing then <coughs> you know what have you got to lose so I've I, I sort of go below the the required dose and I never seen well I've not had a problem with it I have had problems when I've overdosed in the past when I've been spot dosing and I've spot dosed more than I should have for the for the whole tank volume and uh, I, I've I've sort of suffered at my peril I've lost like, it was in a fish tank but uh, I've lost lots of fish you know um, schools of, of green neons and all sorts so I've learned my lesson um, dose sparingly if you're going to dose it which is why I do one mil per per five litres and a little bit over it's currently just gone three o'clock and all that's left to do is turn back on the filters so if we just hop up on the step let's turn that little filter on first and then the main filter And there we have it. So the filter's running again. No issues. All I'd suggest here now is just to keep an eye on this because you've actually put something in that can kill bacteria, although the filters have been switched off. Just keep an eye on the tank, test for ammonia and any ammonia spikes, but you should be fine and just, just monitor for a while. That's how to use hydrogen peroxide. So if you enjoyed this or any of other of our content, please consider subscribing, hit the like button, leave us a comment. We try and answer as many comments as we can. And until next time, bye-bye.